In this video, we're going to talk about Home Assistant automations and comparing them to Node-RED. Is one better than the other, or is there more to it than that? I started out my journey with Node-RED about four to five years ago, and that was because I was starting to reach the limitations of Home Assistant automations. But that's not quite the case anymore. If you need to do something with Home Assistant entities, then it's very likely you can use a Home Assistant automation to do the job. But just because you can, doesn't mean it's the right way to do it or the easiest way to do it. Well, that's what we're going to look at in the video today. The main difference between Node-RED and Home Assistant automations is the way you create the automations rather than what they do themselves. So in Home Assistant, it's broken down into three fairly clear sections. So you've got triggers, conditions, and actions. Whereas in Node-RED, you've got a drag and drop approach where you drag nodes onto the page and then connect them together in a certain sequence. Due to some of the improvements in Home Assistant automations, I've started transitioning some of my simpler Node-RED automations back into Home Assistant. That's because it's easier to manage some of them in Home Assistant because if you've ever tried modifying a flow in Node-RED from your phone, it's not very easy at all. Whereas Home Assistant automations you can easily manage from your phone. Another thing to consider is that what's easy for one person isn't necessarily easy for another person. I had an interesting conversation a couple of years ago with the guys over at Home Assistant Podcast, Phil and Rohan. So Rohan was somewhat open to the idea of using Node-RED, whereas Phil wasn't really that interested. His, his view was, why move a bunch of boxes around when you can do something with a couple of lines of YAML? So I thought that was quite interesting. And if you want to check out the podcast, then I'll leave it in the description below. So I've created the same automation in both Node-RED and Home Assistant. I would say this automation is a medium complexity, so we can have a look at some of the intricacies and then you can decide which one you prefer. So what the automation does is it tries to open the blinds as early as possible in the morning, but whilst ensuring that we're not still in bed. So if it's 11.30 in the morning, then it will open the blinds by default because we should be out of bed. If it's 8.16 in the morning, then it will check to see if there's been motion upstairs in the last 15 minutes or not. And if there hasn't, then it will open the blinds. Or if away mode is on, then it will open the blinds at that time as well. Otherwise, it will check between 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. to see if there's been motion upstairs for 15 minutes or not. And as soon as there hasn't been motion upstairs for those 15 minutes, then the blinds will open. So let's have a look at the Home Assistant automation. You can see there's three triggers here. There's one for 11.30 a.m. There's one for six for 8.16 a.m. And you can see I've got trigger IDs here. And then there's one for the 15 minute motion. So if it goes from on to off for 15 minutes upstairs, then that will trigger. Now let's have a look at the conditions. So between 8 a.m. and 11.31, so it has to be between those times. And then these are the conditions that relate to the triggers. So we've got this one, which checks if it was triggered by the second floor motion after 15 minutes. This one, which checks to see if it was triggered by the 11.30 trigger. And then let's skip to this last one. This checks whether away mode is on or not. And then this one here has two checks within it. So basically, if it's 11.16 in the morning, it has to check to ensure that there's been no motion for 15 minutes. And then if any of those four conditions are met, then it triggers the actions. So opens the blinds. For the guest room blinds, it also does a check in here to ensure that guest mode is off. So now looking at the Node-RED automation, let's start at the top. So at 11.30 in the morning each day, this will fire, and then it goes into here. This is not really required, but it just makes it simpler because there's four nodes over here. Uh, it will go straight into these and open the blinds. You can see that for the guest blind, it's got this condition here to ensure that guest mode is turned off. Next one down, so second floor motion, let's click into this. So if there's been no motion for 15 minutes on the second floor motion sensors, which are set up as a group, 
Then move to the next step, which is checking the time range to ensure it's between 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And then likewise, it triggers the blinds to open. So the last section is the 8.16 trigger. So 8.16 each day, it checks to see if away mode is on or not. If away mode is on, then it automatically goes to here and opens the blinds. Otherwise, if away mode is not on, then it checks again to see if there's been motion in the last 15 minutes. Once there hasn't been motion in the last 15 minutes, then it will open the blind. I'd be interested to know which version of these you find the easiest. In this example, I find Node-RED a bit easier, but there are certainly a lot of automations where I find the Home Assistant version easier to do. Now let's talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses between Node-RED and Home Assistant automations. So Node-RED has got access to all of the entities and services within Home Assistant. So you could argue that Node-RED is the better of the two and can do everything that Home Assistant can and more. However, you've got to consider that Node-RED is a separate system. It's either a separate system altogether or it's running as an add-on within Home Assistant. So you can get communication issues between the add-on and between Home Assistant or it could just stop working. The benefit of having everything inside Home Assistant is that it's likely to work and if it doesn't work it means that everything altogether has stopped working in Home Assistant. So it's easier to troubleshoot and easier to maintain. The ability to update just single nodes or single flows in Node-RED is really nice and I like that. However, Home Assistant have made some changes a few releases ago which means that when you update an automation in Home Assistant it only affects that automation. Whereas previously, it would impact other automations as well. So if any other automations were running or waiting for some state changes, then that would get impacted. Whereas that's not the case anymore. So I would say they're fairly even on this front. I would also say that Home Assistant automations are fairly intuitive and easy to create. And also for power users, you can still go into YAML mode, which is quite handy as well. So there's a lot of flexibility within the UI. So now let's talk about where Node-RED potentially has the upper hand. Although Home Assistant has thousands and thousands of integrations, Node-RED also has a lot. They've got palettes that are created by the community and you can use them to communicate with different APIs. And also, if there isn't an integration, you can generally build it yourself within Node-RED. I particularly like that Node-RED can actually link to more than one Home Assistant instance. So say if you've got an RV or a second home, you could actually have one Node-RED instance running and communicating with both instances of Home Assistant and automations that combine the two. You can do something similar in Home Assistant using the MQTT state stream or MQTT bridging, but I would say that's a bit more complicated to set up. Whereas in Node-RED, you just set up your connections and you point it to whatever you want to point it to. One of the nodes I use quite a lot in Node-RED is the HTTP request node. In Home Assistant, you can make API calls, but it's fairly limited and pretty much limited to basic authentication. Whereas in Node-RED, you can use the function node to do a lot of complex calculations that are needed for some API connections. An example of an API I connect to is the Blue Iris API. So I use that to change profiles so that when we're not in the house, then it changes the profile to start recording on more cameras. A couple of the other APIs I connect to are NiceHash and SwitchBot. So, do Home Assistant automations make Node-RED redundant or does Node-RED still have its place? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want to know more about Node-RED, so some of the other nodes like the function nodes and the switch node, then please let me know as well. I hope you found digging into the differences between Node-RED and Home Assistant automations somewhat useful or interesting. And if you did or got any ideas, then please leave them in the comments below. And whilst you're there, consider subscribing and liking the video. Well, that's it for today, so thanks until next time. <music>